Hi, it's uh, Peter from Record Power. Uh, following on from the last video, when I stripped the shaft out of the WT200 here and cleaned it up and um, lubricated it after it hadn't been used for a, a period of time. Um, following on now, I've got to dress the wheel. I've cleaned my uh, shafts and I've just based um, two shafts to carry the jigs. And I'll just clean these with um, these one of these fibre cloths, give them a good rub, and then um, I shall put on a little bit of um, only a slight little bit of wax on there, and that's just so it all transfers over nice and smoothly. Because what I want it to do, and what you want it to do as well, is glide across with your tooling on there. And your jigs, what you're going to put in play. So, I want those to be nice and smooth that travel across there with no grittiness to them. It might even be a case that you want to wash these bushes out uh, again. Um, uh, some something like the WD 40, give that give it a clean out and uh, clean the bushes out as well. Get rid of that gritty feel onto the shafts. Put a little bit on this one before I put it back on. You don't want too much of this, it's just a little bit. As I say, just so it all it'll help to clean them up as well if you've been um, rubbing them up, so it'll help to get some of the muck out of the shafts as well. Okay, just a little bit of that. Like I say, I just want all those shafts just to be nice and smooth on there. I don't want it gritty because you just uh, it's not going to help your process of um, dressing your tooling. So what we didn't finish off the last time around was just cleaning this um, wheel up that transfers the drive over. So if we do that now Quick, easy procedure. Again, take this off. Take the torque away from the driving wheel. That should just come off. And what I want to do is just get rid of these little ridges in here. And again, it just wants to be. It doesn't. This doesn't want to be that smooth. It wants to be a little bit on the rough side, only so as it can pick up the drive a little bit more easily. And if it's got any little high ridges on there, just work those off. You don't. Um, this is 150 grit, so something around that. And I just want to just buff it up a little bit. And now I've got the torque off, I can move it quite easily. just help the drive because this will polish up because with the pressure of the um, of your shaft on there it will glaze the top of it so it's not hard to do it doesn't take a lot of time but it will pay little dividends just mix the machine and just work a little bit better all the way around. After you've done that, just give it a little brush out. Now to put it back on again. This is one of those either goes on first time as I said before. We fiddle around with it a little bit. There. Pinch that up. Your washer onto the oh, push the lever shaft all the way up, and the washer just onto the shaft. Pinch that up. So that little procedure's done. So now switch it on. 
put a little bit of torque on there. I'll start it down at low speed again. So what we're looking at to do next is to redress this wheel. And basically all I want to do on this is this shaft needs to be parallel to that wheel. And this is more, say more important, but it's as important from when you have it from new. Because when you have it from new, it's probably going to be a lot more... Well, it hasn't been dressed at all, so it's not... All likelihood, it's not going to be um, lined up to that shaft. Because if you put a jig on there or something at the moment and the wheel's not um, true, it's going to go just to the highest point all the time, so you're not going to true your tool up properly. So they say it's the idea we want to drop that wheel down to the same as the shaft. So to do that, we need to get some water, and I've got about a litre here. Well, points, points isn't it? About, about points here. And if I start it up slowly, it'll stop to absorb the water. See, it hasn't been used for a while, so it's going to be quite dry. And I want enough water in there, that the wheel can run into it, and I don't want it splashing over the top. Keep an eye on that as well when you're using your tool. If you don't want it um, running dry in there. So now we've got the little dressing tool. And again, on this, I want it to run up and down the shaft nice and freely. And this is going to sit on there like that. That. And what we're going to do is then dress this and set this arm up equally beside of that. Let's move it up out of the way first. Right. So I want that to be equally beside of that, so the stroke's equal basically, that's all. But I don't want this. Initially, when I put this on, to be really digging into the top of the uh, the wheel, so you've got to be careful when you set it up, because whatever you take out, if you put a groove or whatever you put into there, you're going to have to dress it all out. So when you're setting it up, pay attention to that. You want, you want to find it's the highest point first before setting up on the lowest point otherwise you're just going to gorge into that and it just makes it work harder because what you basically got to transfer this across to drop this wheel down so a little bit at a time and the final few cuts you want to take your time over there so anything from 30 seconds upwards the, the smoother you do it the less little track lines you have in there you've got your your dressing stone as well, which you will um, uh, your grade which will take your wheel down. Um, but so the smoother the operation, then the, uh, the easier the application is altogether. Anyway, so we're getting somewhere there. So what I want to do, say, so put that on, put that onto there, and have this about equal on here, so I can get more move my stroke across and then just pinch those down initially. Take that up and I want to try and get as much as that stone in contact. Then I can check my angle I can drop this down then. A little bit at a time. Oh, 
get someone new. Let me turn that position. And look at it again. And there's just some dim off final ones on there. Just check it back. You don't go over and drop over the back of the wheel. So I just want a little bit on there. It's a fiddly part to set up, but if you take too much out, you can't put it back in. So it's worth while just taking the time just to do it. Alright, there's someone close there. So lock those off. And my stroke is about even. So now, started in the slow, we're going to need a little bit more water again. I basically get this, also we need some torque set on there as well, so it's like a nail. I've done the chisel and I want to just start cleaning the face up I can uh, put the fine dressing stone on and then finish it off on the honer uh, but you're not going to square your wheel up directly off the stone you, uh, you need to do it off the, off the tool arm to get a proper job so I'm going to go down just a fraction more and the wheel's starting to come down you can see the work there Still a little bit of the old uh, coloration from the wheel. Most of the most of the other stuff is dropping out. Still a little bit coarse on my uh, initial dressing, but then as I as I come down more flatter, and I can slow it down, slow my feet rate across uh, down even more. Now, just 
stop that, take those just out of the way just for a moment. Get the core side of this. Where your water starts to drip over the sides, but there's nothing you can really do about it. It is what it is. So when we think this is about right, could do a little bit more. can see the stone's finished off now. So what I want to do now is just finish that off a little bit more. And I'll just roll the edges. Where I've been coming off it's all going to be sharp. Now the wheel's nicely dressed, it's nicely finished off, and I've just taken a little bit off that sharp edge there as well, so as one I'm coming off, it's not going to keep on uh, being a rough edge leading back onto there. So it's a little bit messy, but it is what it is, because the machine is uh, uh, working in water. So it, we've done the basic dressing on there, so if we were going to put um, a bevel edge chisel or something across there, Put that in the holder and put that square to there, lock these up, lock that up. This is going to travel across here. Now the chisel itself is roughly around about 25, so you've got a little um, angle finder and you've also got a little angle setter in the kit. Now taking this wheel into account, initially when you get it, it's a 200mm wheel, um, approximately 8 inches or on the WD250, you've got a 10 inch wheel, 250mm uh, thereabouts. Once you dressed it, obviously the wheel is going to be slightly smaller and the more you use it, the wheel is going to, to shrink due to the, due to the wearage. So on these you've got your little scale on the top part here. You've got the, um, the wheel size in Imperial and on the left hand side you've got it in metric and then below you've got your little pointer pointing to, the, to your rough angle which in this case is about 25. So we set the top ones first and this one is worn approximately ooh, about a quarter of an inch off it, something like that, uh, 6 millimeter. So I'm going to go just underneath that, so I need to go slightly under on there. Now transferring this onto here, what I need to do is first of all, line this up by eye. So I need to wind that up. And that should be somewhere around about 25. So when that's, uh, see the best way for you to see this. So I want that to sit on the wheel, and then approximately squared off to there. But the acid test, so that's looking about right to me by eye, and off the setting on there. That your acid test is to actually drop that on there, look through, and adjust it to suit. And then, what I've previously done is just use the black marker on the back of here. I need to touch a little bit up on there because it's rubbed off a little bit. 
such a good true angle. And don't switch it on yet. Just drag the wheel. See what your bearings like. Not brilliant. But there it's nearly there. So it's a little bit awkward seeing through it. Once you think you've got the position, so check it. some sort of a barren area across there. Now this isn't too badly worn um, so again I want it decent speed on there. Make sure these are all locks, nicely locked on. I don't want the water necessarily coming off. Probably got a little bit too much water in there at the moment. That's why I'm getting a little bit of excess bit less in there to be honest. So what I want to do now is put a little bit of pressure on the on the on the chisel itself on the tool there and a little bit here as well and then just transfer it backwards and forwards. And try and keep it moving as well. All you're doing is you know, uh, keeping your uh, wheel wear down as well. They're not just working in one position all the time. I'll set the torque by hand, so this is a good test for the, for the torque indicator as well. I'm putting a bit of weight, extra weight on the wheel. So because I've changed that early and just give that a little clean. It wouldn't hurt just to keep an eye on that and check it uh, as you're doing this. You might need to just do it. So if it does slip or something like that, it's just because you need a little bit more pressure set up on there. Right, so now the tool is nice and cleaned up. So what I want to do now, before I take that off, is I stone wherever I put it. Dress with the finer side, just, just to polish it off. I'm just feeling the grade now of that because um, previously I've, I've done it with the coarse one, but if it's got the chisel, I would just want to get rid of some of the, um, the marks out of the tool. And this is a uh, machine whetstone grinder running in water. I'm not going to get any heat out of this. It's going to be uh, displaced by the actual water itself. So I'm not going to get a burn or anything else like that. I've trimmed the edge of my wheels over so those are nice and smooth as well. So I'm not going to get a, a, a rough face or something to cut my finger. So what I can do now, just get transfer right onto there. And now you can even hear the noise levels drop right down because I've took the coarseness out of the stone. So all I'm doing now is just polishing on that face. And a few more seconds of this and I should be somewhere near the, the, the finish. So what you can do now is to use the honing 
turning wheels. Now we're going in the opposite direction with this. What you don't want to do with any of these tools is work off the front face. It's got to be off the back face. On the whetstone wheel itself, depending on your tooling application, you can use both, fa uh, both sides of the wheel. So I'm using the chisel there, so I'm dropping the blade edge onto there. If I'm using a gouge or uh, some other uh, turning tool, whatever, I'd work off the front of the wheel. So that's important to, to note that. So on this particular side, I can, again, I can use this if I wanted to onto there and set it up the same as I did with my um, using the whetstone application. So I can go onto there and set that up and get it again somewhere in line. It's not far off. Pinch those off. Now I've already put a little bit of um, oil onto these buffing wheels and that's uh, mineral oil. Don't use um, a general purpose oil like a 3 in 1 oil or something like that. What will happen is the, and for this I can get rid of the tray a little bit. So I've got a bit too much water in there anyway. So, switch her on, turn her up a little bit. So I'll put a bit of this muck on you, a little paste. Just work that into the wheel. You say it's got um, mineral oil on there. So what I'm going to do now is stop polishing that tool up. What I also want to take into account is doing the back. Do a little bit more on the back. Put a little bit too much paste on there. Never mind. wheel feels a little bit dry, could probably do with a little bit more oil into that. What you want, don't want to do with this, if I take that off there now I'll show you a way to use it as well. So you can use it like that, but also use it like this, but bring it back. Don't start from here and never use the tool from that side. So I've done both both faces. This is where it gets awkward with me on the flipping camera, sorry about this. So that's nicely finished off now. Maybe a little bit more and I can get out those all those fine marks on there. But again it's a chisel and I've done the back as well. So I haven't got that little burr on there. This is a nice clean edge both sides. Very sharp now so be careful what you're doing with it. You're um, likely to uh, cut yourself quite easily with it. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, if you need any more tips on, on on the on this machine, let us know. If, if I can't do it, I'll get uh, get one of the lads in the technical department or in the training room to uh, go over some bits and pieces. If anybody's got any queries, so I hope this little um, video has been of help and not too clumsy. Bit of a mess, but we got there in the end anyway. So cheers for now. Catch you soon.